Okay, we're getting ready to go into the cross-sectional area of the port and basically uh, May 6, 2012, 9 o'clock. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I go about pulling the different measurements off of the port and writing them down. Okay, we'll start from this angle here. Using this deal here is a snap gauge. Notice that we've got different sizes of snap gauges for doing different measurements. The measurement we're going to report, record now is length, which will be the top to the top. Width is from side to side. And what I do is I get on the marks. Now, if you'll notice that what I'm going to do is there's marks here. Them marks are measured every .300 or 300. So we got... Okay, so as you can see, what we got is marks 300, 600, 900, 1200, and 15. 15 is all the way into the guide, which 18 would actually be touching the guide. You can see the mark in it. It's hard to pull a measurement out of that. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to mark. Okay, so as you can see, part of this is also getting this and not being a teeter-totter. Uh, well, what I'm talking about is you have to get this straight or your measurement can be different. What I try to do is use it in parallel with the angle, 90 degrees from the straightness of this shaft. Okay, we'll get a backup view in a minute, but I just wanted to show you the first measurement that we come to. Okay, I've released the snap. This is going to be our first measurement, and our first measurement... The first measurement, as you can see, where I snapped it right there, and then I measurement, I'm coming up with about one, three, four, seven. Now remember, just moving the teeter topper up and down can change 10 or 20 thousandths. So it's best that you develop a method that is able to where when you check it, you're consistent each time that you do it. Now the next measurement, we're gonna come on down and hit that one. The next measurement, is going to be 1.359. This is the second position. Now I pull it out. Okay, now I'm going to go in a little bit further. I'm going to go all the way in this time to the farthest hit before it turns into valve guide. This would be about 1200 in. Okay, I see how I've kept it straight. Then I pull it out. And I'm at 1437. Okay. Anyway, that's how we do it. The length. Now in a few minutes, we're going to hit the width side. Okay. All we're doing is reverse. If you'll notice, the lines on the bottom match the lines on the side because they have to. Otherwise, if the measurement's off on the wall, it won't line up with the measurement and we can't get L times W. So all I'm doing now is coming up on the same spot, which will start right here at 300 in. And then we record the measurement. Now, on the width, that measurement's 1,365. That's 300 in. Now we'll go in to the same spot that we was. Let's say 900 in, which would be on that third mark. See, we get a different number. These numbers are going to line up in length and width of the port. This dimensions, what we're coming up with, is then what we're going to do is we're after we get these numbers measured here and here, we're going to turn the head over and get the bowls, and then we're going to sonic check each port. This is the creation of a sonic map. Until we have that, we can't do no cutting, because otherwise we'd be blind as a bat going in there. We don't know what we're cutting into if we're going to hit water, and that's where the sonic checker comes into play. A person that really ports heads has to have a sonic checker. That is more important than a flow bench. Bottom line, if they don't have a sonic checker, take your heads somewhere else to be done.